Accuracy International Part 2 Long Term Review next on my channel. YouTubers, it's Derek, uh, and I have for you today finally the long awaited part two long term review of the Accuracy International AIAT. It has held up exactly like I thought it would help hold up. Uh, we're going to go through the accessories, the modularity of the system, uh, which kind of rolls into two uh, point of use, accuracy, reliability, how has it held up and also the service life i'm going to go through all the accessories that i use on the ai at from front to back uh up front here i have fun, finally become a muzzle brake boy i use the uh, area 419 <clears throat> hellfire brake works really really well at keeping that gun flat and cutting recoil on barricades and on competition this also has a muzzle device in it so that when you take it off I can mount my suppressor which I showed on the PM2 video but uh, I can show it again here in a few it is wearing a new barrel that unless you're really watching me a lot you haven't really seen this is a somewhat heav much heavier contour uh, 6.5 Creedmoor barrel. If you can see the contour here, it barely steps down in the chamber area, unlike something like my 308 barrels, which step down a little bit. Uh, this I screwed this thing on May last year, started shooting PRS competitions, and whoo, 6.5 is a sweet cartridge. I, I finally became a believer in 6.5. I do think that something like a 308 is really great on practicing wind calls. If you can shoot 308 well, you're going to shoot 6.5 or 6 mil Creed more even better. Uh, service life of the barrel has been uh, pretty good from what I see. If you're not hot rotting any cartridges, you can get this thing to survive easily past 2,500 rounds. Uh, some guys are going as much as 3,000, 3,500. So we'll see about that. I've got a little over 1,600 rounds through this barrel. Then I've got an additional 500 through my um, 308, and 308 just does not wear. Uh, coming down here, I no longer have the Harris bipod underneath. I have an Atlas on a spigot mount. So the spigot mount's really nice because in a, a jiffy, I can take that mount off real quick. I need to go to do a barricade stage and then tighten it back up the way that you disconnect and reconnect this 
pretty simple and kind of neat. There's a tension knob here that keeps the bipod tight. You spin it out and push it in like that. And you'll hear a click. And then you press this little button here, hold it down, and your spigot comes out. So, again, push it in, pop the tension knob back in, and then tighten it down. The reason why I like the Atlas is because when I'm on stages and I need to extend to just the right height, I can grab the Atlas, use the thumb screw or thumb tensioner, pull it straight down, and then tune to what I need. That way, uh, you don't have to worry about the tension from that spring in the Harris bipod that just kicks it out full length. Uh, the problem with that is once you're in like a, a long position like this, then you have to push that tension knob in at the same time, trying to push the bottom of the foot to get just the right size. This is a lot smoother of an operation. The other great thing is I can put my bipods fore and aft more than 90 degrees and that way I can go into real tight positions or if I need to get low and I need to extend the footprint of my bipod and rear bag I can do something like a 45 degree angle like this and really kick that sucker out if I have to it just gives you a lot of options you can also do some some wacky things like you know one forward and one back and which I've never used but on the feet I have the I do believe they're from Hawk Hill the talons they were given to me by a buddy who just didn't like them and man oh man do they bite onto the deck so coming up front here you notice I've got a night vision bridge there's a good reason for this uh, no I do not have a clip on night vision device yet uh, hopefully once Pennsylvania's Game Commission allows us to hunt at night with night vision for coyotes, uh, then it's game on. But realistically, what I use the night vision bridge for is basically a thumb over bore grip, like a C-clamp, like you run a carbine. But when I'm on a barricade, I can clamp onto this, pull it into my shoulder, and never touch the barrel. So... That helps with barrel harmonics when you're shooting long range. On the side here, you'll notice I have what you, it looks like key mod. This is actually key key lock system, which is proprietary to Accuracy International. Thanks, AI. Uh, they found that it's a lot stronger of a design than standard key mod. But I have a Picatinny rail. It simply mounts inside here you slide forward and then tighten it down i use this specifically for my coyote light and hopefully later an ir illuminator below here sits a really right stuff arca rail and this arca rail makes it feasible to mount arca accessories <clears throat> for prs we have what are some guys call gamer plates uh this is, one is specifically from gray op cnc uh, please support Dave Preston. He's a uh, a dad, a fellow competitor, a great competitor, and uh, all this stuff is done in house. He makes some really cool gear. So, what this one does specifically, this is actually made for the Accuracy International because it has a mag cut out. Because the balance point of the rifle is. Without a suppressor, it's roughly about right here, which is right in front of the magwell. So, when you put one of these gamer plates on and tighten it down, this allows you to spread the balance zone out of the rifle so the gun isn't so top-heavy because the AI is a very, very tall system. So, when you're shooting with this and you put a bag underneath this, it becomes extraordinarily stable. Impact! Now, some guys, you know, say, hey, take that damn thing off and use just a, a bag. I'll tell you now, this here is, for me, way more stable, at least with an AI, because of how tall it is. If it was something like a manor stock, I could, I could see the reasoning behind it. But this cutout also allows you to insert and take out your magazine and doesn't block it. 
most some of the other plates out there are completely solid and they're uh they're not really meant for an ai but the gamer plate is really awesome for barricades in fact oftentimes i'll actually just leave this on here the entire time speaking of barricades make sure that you get something like uh that small bag over here if you're doing something like cattle tubes like a cattle gate something that's nice and thin like this and then setting your rifle on top of it i won't use my gamer plate for cattle gates because the system's just flat out too tall but you use something like this with a uh, sling and this is something i found out from the guys in norway the way they run those gates is they'll put a small bag on here on the tube they'll put their sling up front and attach it to their belt get into position cinch the belt down and basically sit back and that gives you a nice tension which allows you to shoot these barricades without you know gamer tripods coming back here uh, I do have a two round quiver for stages where I have a, a 12 round stage because AI magazines, the AWs, only hold 10 rounds. So there's no, there's no 12 round gamer mags out there for the AW. But you need the taller action rail to clear this night vision bridge. Something else that's really cool, I saved this for you guys. Uh, something really slick about the AIs that I was not aware of until I took the shorter rail off is the fact that it has recoil lug keys on it. So these recoil lug keys go straight into the action. What this does is it keeps the rail from moving, one. Two, it prevents the screws from snapping off. Uh, a good example is if you look at something like Modern Day Sniper, they have a video up on Instagram where they're saying, hey, you know, lock tight your screws because they were shooting through under wind mag. And the next day, the guy was having all kinds of grouping problems. They were trying to figure out what it was, whether it was the rifle, whether it was the scope. Come to find out, their rail was moving because they didn't blue, use blue Loctite and let that thing sit for a while. Uh, it worked its way loose. This recoil, these two recoil lugs help with that. That's another little thing that I found with the AI that they really put the money and time into. It's uh, really, really neat to see that kind of stuff. Using standard spur mounts, I'm a huge fan of the spur one piece mounts with a rail on top for red dot sight. I use that primarily for uh, predator hunting. That way, I can bring this rifle into the field. If I have a close-up shot, I don't have to worry about this, you know, five to 25 power optic being able to see something super close. And this also allows me to, you know, not bring a shotgun into the field. Coming back around the other side of the action, the spur mount, this is one of the reasons why I love spur. They, have attachment points here which I attached a Hawk Hill dope card reader and then the downrange systems digital dope card this thing is slick uh, I have issues with reading my own handwriting so having a dope card where it's digital I don't have to f fuss with it uh, I don't have to worry about any um, ink pens or um, Chinese markers where if I'm sweating I can rub it off easily you know it takes two seconds to transfer it over from your phone so I use that style of dope card and then again awesome knowing people that sew um, I had someone spin up a nice little dope card protector and that dope card stows away nice and tight against the rifle and then I can fold the stock over and it protects it uh, sitting on top here is a Schmidt and Bender PM2 uh, with the grid reticle. I've kind of fell in love with this this design. I always wanted a Schmidt and Bender PM2, and for them to have the grid reticle was just the icing on the cake. Um, moving back here, the trigger. 
I haven't done the damn thing to the trigger. It's still that roughly three and a half pound trigger pull. And it has worked fantastic because it's an AI. I have swapped for a, I think in the last video I did have my, my thumb hole stock, which I love for getting in and out of positions because I can strong arm it like this and position it in. And then once I'm in position, I have a Anarchy Outdoors thumb rest that I use for when I go into position. It allows me a nice neutral grip. It allows me to not have to get in and out of the thumb hole stock every time I'm cycling the bolt. The bolt, speaking of the bolt, it is smooth. It should be. It has over 2,000 rounds through it. How it's held up over time, you see, my camera wants to focus. And see the uh, lugs are nice and shiny because of how much I've shot it. The finish on the bolt shaft is starting to come off, which, I mean, that's to be expected. And I've only had one real issue, and that was fault of the me for not reading and the shop for selling me a whole bunch of rifle primers instead of small rifle primers uh, from Federal. They weren't 205 M's. They were pistol primers. In fact, I still have them in here. Uh, I was doing load development, and the one shot... I took video of, I noticed there was a whole bunch of gas and it was sh shot straight back. Started looking into the primers and they were just all completely blown out. Uh, it did erode the firing pin a little bit, but you know, that's unfortunately the game we play. Firing pin still runs great. So that's that. Uh, back here, this chassis has been so bomb proof. That what they decide to do once they install the hinge mechanism for the rifle, they bond that to the chassis too. So it's not like you can just unbolt it and take the stock off. This thing is is mated on there. Back here, you know, haven't touched anything with the riser besides adjusting it to the new scope. And on the very back, I have the target adjustable butt stock and all the spacers in. I realized that. <laughs> I'm a big guy. I'm, you know, on a good day, I'm 6'2". Uh, if I'm squatting heavy that day, I might be 6'1", or if I'm running. So, getting into position, this is actually the proper cheek rise and length of pull that I really need. So, we're going to go over modularity next. Modularity is something of a, a personal... of a personal taste. This rifle does not have the modularity of something like the AX. It doesn't have a tubular forend. You can't just put, you know, uh, key slot pieces everywhere and, you know, instantly put your night vision on front. That's one great part about the AX is that this uh, bridge, you don't need it because the entire thing is just nothing but tubular handguard. It's not as tall either. The tubular handguard completely wraps around this and brings that whole system up a little higher. It's a little bit friendlier for PRS. I like the AT just because I like the looks of the AT. There, I said it. If it was for purely competition, I'd get an AX. Now, keep in mind with the chassis, you do have the one expensive option of checking out the Accuracy Obsession chassis. Now, what this does is it brings... It, you actually have to debond the chassis. There's a new chassis that you install. It brings the whole chassis up in line with the bar barrel. It has built-in M-lock and also has built-in Arca rail. I think it's $1,200 for the package. But if you're an AT guy, a diehard AT guy, and you want to compete well in PRS, then that's probably the best option. The AX sits... A lot higher into the barrel unlike the AT. The AT is very very tall. 
it's a real son of a gun to get in between certain barricades. But stock wise, pretty much these spacers and the, the height, that's all you got stock. You can put this target stock on, which can tilt left and right, up and down. So that gives you a little bit more of the, uh, the AX modularity, but you can't just do it real quick in the field. You need your Allen wrenches to get things squared away. The other thing too is some guys don't like the feel of the pistol grip. I, I find it perfectly fine. The trigger itself is really nice because you can move it back and forth to get just the perfect trigger press. I haven't touched it. it it's perfect for me. Again, because of the way that the AT is designed, I had to put this really right stuff rail on. The Some of the new AIs actually have that Arca rail built in. Some of the AXs, that handguard can be replaced with an Arca rail. So there, there's a lot of options there for... You know, if you're going the AX route, AT, it's a different story, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, point of use, shooting uh, long range, obviously, uh, but it's great for hunting because it is a reliable gun, highly reliable. I've put over 2,000 rounds through it, and I've only had one hiccup, and that was due to the fact that I had this gun right up against a barricade. Went to cycle the bolt, the piece of brass hit the barricade and popped right back in the chamber. That's going to happen with any bolt gun if you run it close enough to a barricade. Same thing with an AR, whatever. You're going to induce a malfunction. Other than that, nearly no hiccups whatsoever. So the reliability is just top notch. But the point of use, I, I take this thing hunting. I take this thing uh, target shooting. Just, you know, prone out, which is where this thing really shines. You can really tell this was meant to be a long-range rifle that you're sitting on your belly. But, you know, they they have a lot of characteristics of, like, a um, an Olympic rifle because the balance is there. There There's certain things to take into account. Like, I actually like the flat bottoms of this rifle compared to the AX because it really does sit on a bag a little bit easier, even though the height over bore is a little bit extreme. Technically, height under bore is a little extreme. Accuracy. Extremely accurate. Now, accuracy tends to be the shooter plus the ammunition that they're using. I'm using, you know, hand-tuned, high-end ammo. I'm usually running, my worst groups are half inch, my best groups are usually, what, point, point three oh, so what's that, third of, third of an inch? Yeah, we'll go with that. I'm not going to say that I'm a quarter MOA, but, you know, a third to a half an inch at 100 yards is very feasible. Now, that being said, what, the name of the game for us is uh, essentially vertical stringing. And what you want to do is take this out as the longest yard yardage that you can shoot, see what your vertical spread is. Don't worry about horizontal. Horizontal has everything to do with your trigger press and your wind. So your breathing and your loads are what's important with your vertical spread. And at a thousand last, well not last year, in January, I ended up shooting a five shot group at a thousand yards and it was eight inches. So, you know, that's that's more than what the gun's capable of. If I'm doing my part, my, my wind calls, I think I was holding like 0.7 mils windage that day and that was pretty much no wind. So this, this rifle is more than capable of hitting out past a thousand yards if you're doing your part. And I know a lot of you guys are just shooters. You don't hunt. Um, I was kind of the same way. But uh, this is definitely a hunting rifle if you want it to be. How's it held up? Uh, my only real gripe, and you can see it here in the skins, is that it gets chipped up really, really bad. Thing. This thing is hit, taking some hits. I've fallen down hills with it. Uh, it's fallen off benches at the range it's it, it would make people absolutely cringe but it is a highly reliable rifle uh, this is designed to do what it does best which is being a military rifle that being said service life now the ats 
AXs, they have all been known to be an extraordinarily long service life on these guns. The owner of Rifles Only was just being interviewed from my buddy on the Just F and Send It podcast. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. And he was asking how many barrels has your Arctic Warfare rifle gone through? And his best guess was around, he's on the 26th barrel. Most actions aren't going to take that kind of pounding. The AIs are notorious for being a 100,000 round plus service life rifle. Uh, obviously not the barrel. That's a wear and tear item, just like your tires and your brakes. You have to start thinking that way when you're talking, shooting competitively. But the action itself can last almost indefinitely. His, his one thing that he thought was going to go bad was the trigger. So when he bought his AW, he bought a spare trigger pack, had it in the box, and he said, you know, this thing is probably going to break because I'm going to beat the shit out of it. And the trigger is still in the original box, just sitting there collecting dust because he has not had a broken trigger yet. So that tells you how many rounds can go through one of these things and, you know, survive. Uh, this is why the AI has gotten the reputation it's gotten. It's also why it's the price that it is. So service life's fantastic on it. Modularity, it does, compared to some stocks out there, yeah, it is modular. But compared to something like an AX, uh, I'd go with the AX if you've got think a whole bunch of shit to, to mount on this thing. Like, you know, night vision, uh, a PEC-2, you know, PEC-15, any type of IR illuminator, uh, sh shit like that, then I would absolutely go with the AX. I'd spend the, the extra money. Now, between that... And the AXMC, I would go with the AXMC because between the AX308 and the AXMC, you're only spending roughly another, what, two, th not even $2,000. I want to say it's like $1,000 and you get a long action. It's well worth it. I look forward to competing with this more this year and hopefully getting some more great content out for you guys so if you like this video please like and subscribe click that little bell notification uh, i'm trying to get more content out there uh, now that things have been kind of settling down with me i've been able to uh, put out more content if you haven't noticed i tend to put out a video at least once every week or two so hope you like it and see you next time